All right, let's get into our topic tonight then. In the beginning, open your Bibles to the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. That's right, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. You'll notice your study guide subheading says, In the beginning, God and good. In the beginning, God and good. In order to understand the present condition of our world, we must first understand its original condition as it came fresh from God's hand. What was that original condition described in Genesis, the book of beginnings? Note the following verses. I've given you a list of them there. We'll just look at them quickly. I'm beginning in verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3. Then God said, let there be what, everyone? Light and there was light. Notice verse 4. And God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. Jump down to verse 10. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters He called seas and God saw that it was good. Notice verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass and the herb that yields seed according to its kind and the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind and God saw that it was good. Verse 18. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. Verse 21. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind, every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was what, everyone? Good. You've got it. Verse 25. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 31. The last verse of the chapter. Then God saw everything that He had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Seven times in Genesis 1, seven times in the creation account, Moses records under the inspiration of God, it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good. And then when he comes to the end, he says it was what? Very good. So we can safely surmise that in the beginning, everything was good. Now, there are many words that you could use to describe the world that we live in today, and there are certainly good things. There are certainly wonderful things in the world today, but good would probably not be at the top of the list. Just last night, we looked at ten signs of the times, and unfortunately, all but one of them was bad news. The only one that is good news was the tenth one, and that's that the gospel is going to all the world, and that's the greatest of the great news. Can someone say amen? But the reality is, is that we live in a world that is racked with pain and suffering and sickness and death and disease. What happened? In the beginning, everything was good. It was even very good. Notice the next paragraph. This point is highly instructive. In Genesis 1 and 2, before the entrance of sin, the world was perfect beautiful and untainted by death, disease, or pain. A perfect couple, Adam and Eve, of course, in perfect love, in a perfect environment with a perfect God. You can't get much more perfect than that. So then what happened to create the state of affairs we see today? Pain and suffering and death and disease are the rule, not the exceptions. In order to understand this, go with me from the first book of the Old Testament to the first book of the New Testament. What book is that? Matthew chapter 13. Go there with me if you would. Matthew chapter 13. Again, if you have somebody sitting next to you there who is not getting to the verses or the chapters quite as quickly as you, be sure to help them. Matthew chapter 13. Here we find Jesus telling a parable. A parable is a simple story that illustrates a larger spiritual truth. Matthew chapter 13. We're going to take a look at a parable in which Jesus describes a man who planted a field. Notice in your study guide. In Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30, Jesus tells a parable. That is a story that illustrates a spiritual truth about a field that was planted by a farmer. In verses 37 to 43, he explains the parable. Let's look at this parable together. Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse 24. Are we all there together, everyone? Matthew 13, 24. Another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed what kind of seed in his field? Good seed. There's our word again. 
That's the same word we saw in Genesis 1, isn't it? Verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, that is weeds, among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow, what everyone? Good seed in your field. How then does it have tares? In other words, where did the weeds come from? Verse 28. He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Oh, would you like us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers first gather the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn now we don't have to wonder we don't have to guess we don't have to conjecture as to what this parable means because Jesus gives us the interpretation beginning in verse 37 go to verse 37 he answered and said to them he who sows the what kind of seed everyone good seed is the son of man who's the son of man Jesus Christ, that's right. Verse 38, the field is the what, everyone? The world, the good seeds. There it is. Four times he uses that phrase, if you were paying attention. He says it's good seed, good seed, good seed, good seed, four times. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. Verse 39, the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels fascinating. Jesus tells a very simple story, not difficult to understand. He said it's a story of a man. He went out and he sowed some seed in his field. The, they, the, the, the workers and all of those who were working in the field had seen him sow the good seed. They knew that it was good seed. But later when they came back to investigate, there was weeds among the wheat and they went to the man and said, hey, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did the weeds come from? And here's what I want you to notice. In the parable, Jesus does not have the man saying, well, when you weren't looking, I snuck some bad stuff in with the good. What Jesus says is five words, five of the most important words in all of the Bible. An enemy has done this. Let's say that together. An enemy has done this. Look at the top of the study guide there. What kind of seed was originally sown in the field, everyone? Good seed. This agrees perfectly with Genesis. It began good. It began good, 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 even very good. According to verse 28, who planted the weeds? An enemy. In verse 39, Jesus identifies this enemy, and he says that enemy was who? The devil. Now, here's something I want you to, to get a hold of here. This is a fascinating concept. Jesus accepted no personal responsibility for the presence of weeds. I want to say that again. In the parable, Jesus does not have the man who sowed the seed, being Jesus, the Son of Man, accepting any responsibility for the presence of tares. He says five words. An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. Well, who is this enemy? Go with me from Matthew 13 to Luke 13. Right? You're in Matthew. The next book is Mark. And the next book is Luke. Matthew, Mark, we're going to Luke 13. From Matthew 13 to Luke 13. Incidentally, we are working our way toward Revelation 13. We're going to spend a fairly significant amount of time tonight talking about the Antichrist, but we need to work our way there so we can understand it in a biblically holistic manner.